Today, I'm going to talk about skin diseases and dermatitis. Dermatitis comes from the word derm, which means skin, itis, inflammation of. There are many, many different types of dermatitis. And I just want to share, there's a common denominator with every single one of these conditions. But here's the thing, you have this skin inflammatory condition. There's redness, there's itching, there might be blisters, there might be flakiness. Each one has its own scientific name. But in this video, I'm gonna make this whole topic extremely simple. And I think it could be very useful for anyone who has any type of skin problems. I mean, you have contact dermatitis. Contact means you come in contact with it and you get some itchiness or some rash. And then you have something called atopic dermatitis. Then you have something that's called seborrheic dermatitis. And the derivation comes from a word that means discharge or flowing. And you have many different types of dermatitis. Lichen planus, impetigo, candida dermatitis, psoriasis, eczema. So you have all these very scientific sounding uh, descriptions of various symptoms that revolve around your skin. But basically when it boils down to skin problems, you either have some type of reaction to something like an allergy reaction, or you have some type of immune reaction that's reacting to bacteria, a virus, a fungus, etc. Many of the symptoms from skin conditions are really coming from our own immune system that is reacting to something. So you can consider a lot of these conditions as an overreactive immune system. So what's the most common treatment? Steroids, topical or oral. It suppresses the immune system. And then of course, the next most common treatment is an antibiotic. So you kill only bacteria. And this is why many times you end up with a secondary infection, an overgrowth of candida, an overgrowth of fungus, mold, or yeast. What you need to know is the superficial part of your skin is a universe of bacteria, microbes, all different types. It's called commensal relationship where they don't bother you, you don't bother them, and everything is just fine. And then the skin itself is a barrier because right underneath the skin, you have a huge network of lymphatic tissue, blood vessels, capillaries, which is just filled with immune cells ready to protect you against foreign invaders. So what's the common thread or problem in all of these conditions? They all seem to significantly respond in a positive way to taking vitamin D. For example, when you have hives from something called contact dermatitis, so you got this itchiness. Well, vitamin D inhibits the cells that make histamine. They're called mast cells. Vitamin D lowers the histamine response. Vitamin D is the main regulator or controller of your immune system. And even if you look at almost every single one of these skin problems are worse in the winter. What a coincidence when we have the lowest amount of vitamin D. They're also worse under stress. It just so happens when you raise cortisol from stress, you deplete your vitamin D levels. Now, even with acne, for example, that involves the sebaceous gland, when you take vitamin D, it can help shrink and normalize the sebaceous gland and help regulate the overproduction of that oil. Seborrheic dermatitis, one version of that, if it's on the scalp, is dandruff. And you can use vitamin D cream to successfully treat dandruff. Eczema, psoriasis, vitiligo, as well as alopecia are all related to having a vitamin D deficiency. In fact, it's usually the low vitamin D that triggers an autoimmune disease. But here's the interesting thing about microbes, because if you have a type of infection on your skin or anywhere in your body with a microbe, what some of them do is they start to reduce the vitamin D receptor in your skin. And ultimately, that's the end point where vitamin D can connect and be activated. And if the microbe can keep that not working that well, then the microbe can survive. But also I found out that certain fungi will do it as well. The real solution is just to take more vitamin D. Vitamin D increases a certain enzyme that helps you make melanin. And melanin is the pigment in your skin. So when you're deficient in vitamin D, you're more susceptible to vitiligo. Vitamin D has a very potent antifungal effect. It directly inhibits fungal growth. 
from preventing the development of a fungal infection to preventing biofilms, which is a condition where you have microbes that start to, to develop these little calcium shells to help them evade the immune system. But vitamin D helps prevent the biofilms. Even when you don't have enough vitamin D, your skin becomes drier and less hydrated. And this whole area of dermatology is, seems to be very, very complex, but there's a common theme between almost every single skin disorder, and that would be a vitamin D deficiency. And since we're on the topic of autoimmune conditions on the skin, if you have not seen this video on psoriasis, check it out. I put it up right here. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books it was called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide, Major Updates on the Body Types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to The Healthy Keto Plan, okay? If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever want to know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning. It goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, a uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you within 45 minutes learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special. If you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.